Okay, for our blackened fish, I'm using tilapia today. It's uh, actually, can, you can make blackened fish with many types of different fish. I like tilapia because it's pretty thin, uh, but you can do this, you know, what's even better, uh, quite honestly, if you can find, is uh, redfish. And salmon is fantastic. A little expensive right now. What you want to do is pat that fish dry. And I have some melted butter here. And what we'll do is take the fish and I'll dredge it in the melted butter. Lay it on my cookie sheet. I put aluminum foil in here so cleanup's just a little bit easier. Now we're going to cover them with Paul Perdoe's Blackened Redfish Magic. Now you can make your own. Quite honestly, doesn't make any sense because this stuff is just perfect and fantastic for doing this. And you might want to buy yourself two or three bottles of this because you want to put it on very liberally. on both sides. Now I'm not worried about cleaning my hands for touching this one again because I know that I'm going to use this entire bottle plus another one. Not the whole thing, but I'll that one I'll make sure I keep my hands clean when I touch it. This one I'm not worried about. So now I have another plate for the rest of these. I've got one and a half sticks of butter in, in my, uh, and I put this on the warmer on the stove top to melt it. And yes, I'm going to have some leftover butter, but I'm going to use that to baste or put on the fish while it's in the frying pan outside. In the, see that in just a few minutes. Okay, we got those covered on both sides. I've uh, got the iron skillet already out on the, and you get, by the way, you need to do this outside. Uh, it's just too much smoke and it'll set off your fire alarms if you do it inside. So I've already got the iron skillet uh, heating up outside on the grill. So we'll be there, go there next. Okay, we're ready to start cooking. And when you cook blackened fish, one thing you got to know is that you got everything that you need ready because this happens very, very quickly. So you can see that pan is really, really hot. You can see the smoke coming up. I did put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in there. I'm going to put a little bit more. You want to use an oil that has a high smoke point. And here we go. When you lay these in there, lay them in away from you so you don't splat splatter yourself.
And you see by all the smoke why you have to do this outside and not inside. My smoke alarms would go off if I tried to do this. Now really it's about two minutes on each side. And I usually have my timer to do that, but I don't have a timer. Because I'm using my phone to video it and that's where I have my timer at. But we'll, we'll figure it out. But once you put it in there, just leave it alone. Don't move it around, don't flip it over. Just let it go for two minutes. Now typically, I will put them in with a pair of tongs like these. But when it comes time to flip them, the the fish is gets a little bit too uh, flaky so that you, you really can't flip them with the tongs because it just falls apart. So my plan is, is to, to do it with this and see that nice black crust we got? That's what we're looking for. When we say blackened fish, it's not really burnt fish, it's blackened. It's because of the seasoning on there, that Paul Perdo's uh, black and red fish magic. With that high heat on the black skillet, that's what makes it turn black and give you all that amazing flavor. So another two minutes, or one, one and a half to two minutes on this side. But while that's going on, I like to squeeze lime juice. I'm sorry if my hands are getting in the way of the camera, but some things you can't avoid. So I'm taking these fresh sliced limes and squeezing that over the top of the fish. Adds a nice citrus flavor. So an interesting fact about the, the idea behind blackened fish, fish you can, if you overcook it, it gets dry. There's a lot of moisture inside that fish fillet. If you undercook it, uh, then of course it's not good for you, but it's it, it's too tough and won't stick together. Blackening is 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 kind of cool that you can you can cook it on the outside, get it nice and brown, but if as long as you got the right thickness of uh, fish, not too thick, you can't do this with like a a big piece of halibut, you'd have to keep it to about uh, a half an inch thickness to be able to do that right. So you can see this one, thin one. I'm going to flip that one one more time. I think I'll flip this one again. You can see it's already starting to fall apart, so I got to be careful. Getting a really nice color on there that I like. I'm gonna put some more lime. Oops, it got, got away from me.
Now, if you just garnish it with some fresh sliced limes, it's beautiful, it's delicious. Okay, now let's go ahead and plate this, starting out with some steamed rice. I cooked that in the rice cooker and you can see in another video um, how we cook the rice in the rice cooker and then the asparagus. Uh, you can see in another video as well, but we'll just take some fish. And put that on the plate. And then this is our special sauce, our family secret special sauce. And you can look at the family secret special sauce that'll show you how we make the asparagus and the sauce, which is incredible. You, you will really love this on this particular meal. Drizzle it over your fish and the asparagus. It's absolutely delicious. I don't know why I just like to have some toasted sesame seeds. We hope you enjoy this. Thank you for watching our video. Let us know. Please subscribe so that the next video you'll have uh, early access to and will be notified. Thanks again.